guys, what's going on? I'm just starting the video out here. Uh, luckily, I think I'm pretty much blessed with the gods of Wi-Fi if everything's working correctly. And hopefully you guys can see all of this clearly. But there's a bunch of really cool stuff in here. There's a bunch of really cool stuff behind me. And I'm going to go get my friend Allie, who you guys might remi remember from the uh, stream I did with the comic books. She's actually brought me out here to talk to some of the students about social networking and being a content creator and everything. And there's so much cool stuff all around that I want to show you guys. Let me go get her and then we can get started and I'll show you even more of what's around here. Okay, we're good. I was showing her your other stuff. Oh, online? <laughs> yeah, my big mean dog. Yeah, right. So this is Allie, if you guys remember her. Are you going to tell yeah, us what's up? we'll take you through the museum. You're going to show me around? Yes. All right, show me around and let's show everybody what kind of stuff you guys do here. Did you go down that way? The fully functioning animatronic. This is another thing that was all done by students. I want to say it was on their page to screen class. It was done maybe four years ago. A lot of times pieces that are huge like that, they just sell them to the school. Because they're like, you keep That's it. so awesome. <laughs> What was this used in though, or it wasn't? It wasn't. It was um, just something they made? Yeah. So we have a class called Page to Screen where it mimics a shop setting. So you usually create these big giant monsters and then they make either a short film or a short kind of commercial clip with them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let me turn the bit rate down over here because they're saying they had a couple issues with the connection. It's awesome, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the eyes light up and everything. Hopefully it's better now. I turned the bit rate down a little bit, so we shouldn't have too many problems with the, the way it looks. All right, you want to show me the rest of the yeah. stuff? Um, again, this is all done by students. Yeah, this is just a bathroom door, but look at it. It's all got the biohazard on it. There's student work in there if you want to go in there, actually. Oh, yeah. You know what I saw that was really cool when I was using the bathroom? This, this right here. This is uh, Bebop and Rocksteady from Ninja Turtles. Mm -hmm. I noticed that right away. Look at the awesome costume design they did on all that. Here's another one too. That's actually the thing that's in the case out there. Oh, I didn't notice it was yeah. white like that. Yeah. And this is the makeup they work on yeah. here? So that's from the fashion performance class, these three. And they take that in their fourth semester. Yeah, that's really cool. They did a really good job. And who does the photography for stuff like this here? Um, Rick, he's actually right across the hall from me. I can introduce you to Oh, okay. It's someone who works here? Yeah, there's a big studio. Because everything here is so cool. Like, what's this stuff? So all of this is stuff that it's we It's clay that they students. work? Or? Yeah, this is all the clay stuff. These are like polyphone busts that they make. These two were done by the same girl. She's a grad. Her name's Kaylin Lechner. That's so awesome, man. I, re I really like all this stuff. It's just, it's like all <laughs> awesome toys that, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but people make it here, you know? Yeah, do you see the secret good What's that? Is that like a legit one or? That's actually done by one of our instructors. Oh, they made it? Yeah. Yeah, it's fiberglass. That is nice. That is some really good work with mm -hmm. clay. And then this was also done by Will. He's like our eye guy here. Oh, nice. And the rest of them are students. Look at things. the detail in that. And do you yes. know who Jordi Shell is? No. Okay, so he's a fantastic sculptor and creature designer. He works on like pretty much anything and everything. Um, but he used to come here and do demos, and so he sculpted this little guy for us. Um, he did a lot of stuff for Men in Black. Oh, cool. And there's another one over there that he did too. That's cool with the bionic arm. Mm -hmm. Look how realistic that looks. And that's all just clay. Yep. That somebody did by hand. That's an Look at that. The eyes move and the head on that one lights up. Does the mouth move too? No. Oh, okay. So it just looks around and stuff? Yeah. So they do robotics and stuff here? In their fourth semester, they can choose between the animatronics or a fashion performance like the stuff that's in the bathroom. A lot of people take both courses. Look at this. That is such good detail. And what's in this other room here? This is where I started streaming when I first started this stream. Did you show this stuff? Also? Yeah, well, I saw I showed it in the beginning, but yeah, look. Yeah, and these are his actual makeup kits that he used in all his different movies. And then Jerry Gurgley, who's the technical director, he did that from the original cast of Fluffy from Creepshow. And what's all this? The same? Yeah, more student work. Yeah, more student work. Um, that's a silicone bust down there. We just bought. 
It's one up top and that lights up. Uh, yeah. Werewolf. <laughs> that one's super cute. Yeah. Yeah, Angela, that is Jason. There's the mask right there. And there's another one over there. And then look at these. This is from Total. Yeah. She was a couple years ago, maybe? Yeah. All right, hopefully throughout here we don't have uh, any loss of connection. What are these all just pictures of students and then people working on some stuff? Yeah, so this is a lot of our guest speakers that we've come, uh, that we've had come here. So like we had Jamie Grove who uh, did the Iron Man suit, Shape of Water. Um, this is when Dick Smith used to come here all the time and sculpt. There's Nora and her Nora Zombie. Howard Berger from Canby, all the, the speakers that we have for our special effects program. And some more student work, and like I said, sort of the history of the whole school and how it came from just like a business school with a couple of like nursing programs all the way into what it is today. So Billy Bob Ford has been here a long time ago. Do you want to hit up the class while we wait for Rick? Yeah, whatever. And just show me around. Okay. <laughs> show me what you guys do. <laughs> professionalism class, which is the one they take in fourth semester, you can do we'll talk with them if you want to, and then by that point Rick will be back and we can probably take you up Okay. Are you ready? Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll pause there. I'll tell you. <laughs> All right. Floor's yours. You want us to wait or no? no, no. We're good? How's it going, guys? I'm Dro. I do live streaming and YouTube stuff, and I see you guys do really cool work. Uh, what class is this? What do you guys do here? And what is professionalism? Workplace behaviors. Ah. <laughs> like what kind of stuff? Like show up on time and be don't be rude and stuff like that. And then <laughs> just about building positive relationships in the workplace. Um, how to promote yourself. So that's one of the reasons cool. why you're here. Yeah. In this class, they build a resume. They um, create sample sheets, business cards, a website. Um, we have mock interviews with professionals in the field. So are you guys all, or some of you guys are probably interested in doing stuff online, right? On either YouTube or Instagram, Facebook, or any of that stuff, or you guys really don't care? Or? They're very quiet class. <laughs> you kind of have to yell them to give you answers. <laughs> Anyone? No? No one? You're interested in it? Yeah, we YouTube All right, I'm going to run over to you, and we're going to put the camera right in your face. Oh, God. <laughs> How do you like cameras? Are you good with cameras? That's it. I'm just kidding, but... Honestly, it's like one of those things you just kind of have to get used to if that's what you want to do. But what, do you have any questions about what you're interested in doing with it? Um, I do have a question about YouTube in general. Just how do you keep up with like a uh, consistent upload schedule? <laughs> that's hard. That's very, very difficult. Actually, like a lot of people will sit there and just upload every single day. It means you have absolutely no life. So you don't really have time to go and hang out with other people or like party or anything. If that's what you want to do, like it becomes a full-time job where you're, that's what you do 24 seven. I don't really go many places anymore unless I'm doing something that's involved with my stream or with YouTube. It's fun for me and that's kind of what my entertainment is for myself. And I enjoy it more than going out and like partying and all that. So it's become something that I just love so much that I'm okay with it taking over everything. But that's the only way really to have the ability to upload daily. Because otherwise, like, the, the next best thing I would say is if you can't do that, to make a schedule. And that's how usually people get known faster, is by actually having a schedule so that people know when you're going to be on and everything. I'm really bad at that. <laughs> I have no schedule. I just do it whenever. I turn on my stream, turn it off. And every once in a while, like, when I plan... Oop, this fell. When I planned this out, this ended up becoming a thing that I, I could promote for like a couple days, you know? I had time to tell people about it and they knew that I was going to be coming here in the morning. But when it comes to uh, my live streams that I do daily, it's just random. What kind of stuff do you do? You want to put like makeup stuff on YouTube or? Um, I kind of want to do more of like a commentary thing and eventually get into like gaming. What kind of commentary? Like on what? Just like reacting to different YouTube videos like Strange or like otherwise weird YouTube videos. More like a reviewer on, on other videos kind yeah. of. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, those are a little easier to do because you can just 
you know, pull up a bunch of videos and then just talk about them. As opposed to if you have a specific thing, like if you want to show how to do any of those pieces of artwork out there or whatever, that's one of those things that just takes hours because you've got to videotape your process. You have to have the right lighting. You have to edit. You have to know how to do all of that. Do you edit? Um, yeah, I've tried. <coughs> I've done a bit like of editing, video editing before. I mean, I'm not really good at it, but it's it's okay. And do you, you guys edit? Be, I don't think you have to be really good at editing. You know, like you just need to know how to splice things together. And people love yeah. the, the rawness. That's true. One of the best things about YouTube is that it doesn't really matter what your style is. It, you can find an audience for it. So you can do videos where you don't edit and you just videotape stuff all the way through. Like this live stream is not being edited. It's just as is. So um, I can go back and edit it later and make like highlight clips and all that. But you don't have to know how to do that. And if people are interested in the type of content that you're putting out, that's all that really matters at the end of the day. Like you see, I'm sure you see there's so many channels that do it different. Having that ability to edit sets you apart from all the other people who don't edit. Like if you do a video on, you know, just like skateboarding or something, then you can do a video where you just go out and skateboard and videotape yourself. But when you edit it and you put music to it and you put graphics to it and everything else, it captures a wider audience, I guess, because it just looks so much more professional. So what do you, what do you post about? What happened with me is uh, I originally started, I had this project called Hardcore Mayhem. It was mostly me and my friends, and I play in a band as well. So as I was touring, I was getting all this crazy footage that was jackass type stuff, you know? When I started uploading all that stuff to YouTube, they were like, nope, that's not okay, because you know they don't like that kind of content. It's all too risque for their advertisers. So I started actually uh, switching from that and uploading more of like my pets and I've worked with exotic pets for a long time So I had like foxes and stuff like that on my videos that kind of made my channel take off and Once that gave me a little bit of traction. I decided to start taking it seriously and I started doing it every day like she was saying like it became a Let me try to figure out a way where I can upload every single day so that the algorithm knows that my channel is active and it starts promoting me more automatically. And from then on, it just became, let's post stuff about my animals, my life in general. I do gaming streams, I do all sorts of stuff. So I just like separate everything by playlists. So it's almost like being on a television channel, but you get to pick what kind of content you wanna watch instead of my channel being about just one thing, which, you know, that's probably not the best idea either. Like when you have it about one thing, it's a lot easier to get a faster growing audience. Then I feel like this day and age, like people are used to so many things coming in that they probably enjoy the fact that it could be switched up. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's attention spans yeah. like yeah, that's that. Bad. What is your channel? Let me put it up on the board. The Dro. The Dro. Yeah, T H E D R O. Is anyone else in here do like gaming at all? You do gaming? Why are you hiding? <laughs> Don't be shy. I'm just another person in here talking to you. You can be my friend. <laughs> what do you do gaming-wise? Um, Xbox, Destiny, Halo, stuff like that. Old school stuff? Uh, like Halo. I don't know how old. But you don't stream it? Um, I used to stream Minecraft. Oh, okay, that's cool. There's a lot of people doing that and doing well. I didn't really like it. Uh, what, streaming in general? Uh, girls streaming is just different. I know. <laughs> it is. You're right. It is. It is a lot different when you're a girl streamer. Yeah. One of the big things I got to deal with on a regular basis, too, that a lot of people can't deal with is the hate. There's a lot of really mean people on YouTube. <laughs> so I get like massive amount of hate comments just because the way I dress, the way I look and stuff. So that's one of the things that you have to like know. You can't even put your mind on that stuff. You just got to say, OK, it's there. Either delete it or block it and move on or forget about it because people will harp on like one little thing that's said and it just ruins them. Like I see streamers that will go months without streaming just because they got their feelings hurt from mean things people were saying. And that, at the end of the day, if that's your job, like, you're ruining your own job. You're, you're not doing your own work. Or have thick skin to become 
someone who can do this. <laughs> I mean, I think that's a good thing for you guys to take away anyway, just because this industry can be very, very hard. So I think that bit of advice is helpful across the board, whether you're YouTubing, streaming, whatever, or you're just in a shop, you're on a set, whatever the case may be, I think that that's good advice for you guys to take away. Okay. Yeah, another thing too is um, just learning the technology behind all of it. Even, not just YouTube alone, but just any of the websites, knowing how they work, you can use that to your advantage when you're marketing yourself because there's certain things that you can do that will help you reach a wider audience, whether it's adding tags or any of that stupid stuff, you know? It seems all self-explanatory, but most people don't ever do that. They don't ever take the time to really, they just want to post a picture and be done with it. But when you take the time to actually put all the other information in there, that's how people that don't know you are going to find you. So don't be lazy, you know, when you're, if you're trying to promote yourself and what kind of work you do. That goes for anything, right? I mean... Right. Especially as how saturated it is now, like everybody streams, there's so many people who upload videos on YouTube, it's very hard to get noticed at this point, but it's not impossible. Do you use multiple channels to like promote, so like, you're, do you have a website? Yeah, so I have a website, I'm on all the social networks, and whenever I hear about anything new coming up, I jump on it right away, just in case. It's a lot to keep up with. And that's why most people who are content creators end up actually hiring other people to help them. Because it's a lot to keep up. Like, I've got 10 different social networks that when I post one thing, if I want everybody to see it, I gotta post to all of them. There's no like real easy solution to just post one place and have everybody see it. Do you like to keep it different on every channel though? Like, how do you repurpose for each? It depends. Like, for example, when I was on my way here to say that I was going to be doing a live stream, I ended up actually posting on all my networks and, you know, just put the content there so that everyone can see it. When it comes to individual posts, it depends on what kind of stuff it is. So uh, Instagram, you know, is like mostly for photos. So if I'm doing photo stuff, I'm not going to put that everywhere. Like I have a Reddit account too. I don't need to put every photo I take on my Reddit page because it just doesn't make sense. So knowing the platform and what kind of people use the platform makes it a little bit better too. What I post on Facebook, if I post the same exact thing somewhere else, it doesn't get the same kind of audience. You have to think about social media as what it is. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not a place where you're advertising yourself. It's a place where people want to come together and you know, connect. People want to learn about what you do, who you are as a person, right? And if you're posting the same exact thing too on every single one of your social networks all the time, it just becomes redundant. People aren't gonna keep up with everything you do. But when you have different things going on on each one, it gives people incentive to, for, first of all, to follow you on all of them and not just one. It, they learn about you in, in a, a deeper manner, I guess. They feel more personally connected. And I think that makes, as an artist, that makes people want to purchase what you do because they, they know you. Yeah. Right. How much time do you spend a day, like, on social media? All day. All day. All day. He's not lying. I woke up and he's like, do you want to stream? I was like, uh, <laughs> yeah, hang on, hang on. <laughs> my process is, I'll wake up and get ready to take care of my animals because I have crazy animals. And then once I'm done with that, I'll start getting myself ready and then I just sit at the computer and go through all like my emails and I talk to people who are trying to sponsor me and stuff. <laughs> I have a wolf dog. Um, I had a fennec fox who passed away recently, unfortunately. I, well, I had him all his whole life, but he, he was like super old. Other stuff too, like roaches. I have pet roaches, mostly like bugs now, I guess. I, I had, see, I worked for six, seven years in the actual exotic pet industry. So that's where I started getting like a lot of my footage to upload to YouTube what, of like all these cute animals. And then they started going viral, which is how I started making a living in the first place from that. But my process just became a, it's like, I get paid to do this. So I don't mind doing it every day. It's fun. And I, I don't really see it as a job. So this is what you do full time now? Yeah, I was doing freelance work for a while because I, I did graphic design and, and web design for a long time. So that really benefited me to do my own stuff when I was ready. Then as soon as I had my, uh, my YouTube channel where I wanted it to be, it was not that difficult for me to start promoting myself where a lot of people have to hire help. You know, they have to go out and get a graphic designer and then a photographer and, you know, because not everyone just, I grew up around cameras. So 
I, I learned how to use them and everything. Does anyone here know how to use cameras really well? Or? Well, we have two um, who are in the film program here. Oh, okay. Um, what do you do? Uh, well, I'm in the process of like trying to become like uh, the head lighting person on like movies and TV shows. Or, like DP? Theater. Yeah, well not DP, right. but like gaffer. Oh, okay. Chief lighting technician. And you learn that stuff here? Yeah. How long have you been doing it? Um, my whole life, pretty much. But then, like, I really got into it when I started going to school for it, really. Have you ever had a job doing that? Not really, just... So this is just kind of your opportunity yeah. to learn and try to get into yeah. it? And then when I started going to school here, I got, like, a lot of jobs working on, like, a lot of movies. Oh, okay. Like what? Well, there's one that just filmed down in uh, West Virginia not too long ago called Feast of Seven Fishes. Now will be out probably next November or something. It's oh, like that's awesome. Christmas theme movie. Really. Are you excited about that? Yeah, I am. Have you been telling like your whole family, look what I did? Uh, yeah, <laughs> they all thought when I came to school here that it was like, you're not going to get a job doing yeah, I, I, I got the same thing about music, is oh, really? uh, when I was doing music stuff for a long time. You love what you're doing, you're going to make a career out of it, that's it. I enjoy hanging out with exotic pets and working with wild animals, so I was like, what's the best thing that I can do so that I can sit at home all day and just hang out with cool pets and animals? If I just start showing everybody what I'm doing, I can actually make a living doing it and not have to worry about like going to a nine to five every day. And that's really the best part about it for me is because I have a hard time functioning as the person I am in a nine to five. Because I like having the ability to just do things when I'm ready to do them and then I can do like really great work. But if I'm forced to do it, I, I hate it. As an artist of any sort, like you want to put out your best work. So when you're being forced with like time constraints and stuff, that's how I don't know. Like you having a job like that, that's that's difficult because you got to worry about being like on time. Otherwise, a lot of people are losing money. And yeah, if you're not on time, then you're not gonna get hired back probably. Yeah. yeah, I did that for so long. And with me, a lot of people just think that doing YouTube or, or being a content creator of any kind, that it's, that it's just solely um, people who are lazy, who don't wanna work. At the end of the day, if you look at the type of work that's being done by all these people, it's a lot of hard work. It takes a lot of time and, and effort to put out a content, especially daily. To do something that you love and then making it a career is like 10 times better. How did you convert like, to that? Like starting out as just an uh, amateur and then like, at what point did you start getting Yeah, so the, like I, I did it for years without getting paid because I loved it. That's the only way that anybody can actually succeed doing this kind of stuff if you actually really enjoy it. When I started out, I was uploading all my videos for many years, over 10 years, you know. I, I started um, my YouTube channel in 2006, which is like close to the beginning of YouTube, you know, when it first started taking off. But I didn't start making a living doing it up until about two, three years ago. It came up as I was already doing what I was doing. It was already a daily thing for me. How did you figure all that out? Like With the exotic pet videos that I uploaded, I noticed that one of them went viral, so I all of a sudden I got a payment from it. Okay. It was like $50, and it was the happiest day I could possibly have, because I was like, oh my God, I just made 50 bucks for a video that, like I just uploaded it and I didn't think anything of it. I think it was like extremely pixelated, like under a minute video, it wasn't even long. And that to me made me look at that and go, I should make a career out of this because I see other people are doing it. And if they can do it, I can do it. Especially with the abilities I had, knowing how to work cameras or um, anything in general with graphic design or... Do any of you guys do media stuff or graphics? Casey. <laughs> I'm gonna go down there. What's up? I do some graphic design stuff. How long have you been doing graphic design? Um, well, I've been doing art my whole life. Um, the first thing I picked up was the like crayons and stuff. So. so you did all traditional hand stuff mm -hmm. at first? Yeah. And then you switched over to graphic design? Mm -hmm. What do you do? Uh, what software do you do it all on? Is it like Illustrator stuff or? I usually use Illustrator. I just started using Illustrator recently. Like I've, I've known it for years, but I've never actually used it professionally. And um, I started designing some t-shirts for my channel. Mm -hmm. So I started watching a couple YouTube uh, channels that do just Illustrator tutorials. And I learned how to do some really cool designs that way. Is that what you do to learn how to use it? Yeah. The software? Tell me more. 
What kind of stuff do you do? Like, what kind of stuff do you draw? All horror stuff or it's anime? Okay. What? <laughs> it's illustrative. I guess it would fall under like fantasy stuff. It's a lot of nature -y stuff, like in creatures. What do you want to do, like for a living? I. You don't know yet? No. That's fine too. You don't have to know yet. Like, that's all stuff that you figure out over time. I went to college for a couple of years, and at that time, I had no idea what I was going to do. Uh, all I knew was I wanted to play music and go on tour and have fun with my friends, and that was my main concern. I didn't really care about anything else. Even though I had a passion of like working with animals or doing art in some ways, I never felt like that was going to be my career. Is that what uh, the kids call a selfie stick? This is not a selfie stick. This is actually like a tripod. The selfie stick is the ones that actually extend out. I actually have one of those, but I hated it. It rotates with the weight of the phone and it never holds up. I would have to tape it all up and everything. I assume uh, it was also a little awkward to use what is essentially 13-year-old girl technology um, in like the serious YouTube business. It is. It's extremely weird. I know that people see me if I'm holding this out and like walking around or whatever. It's odd looking, right? It's not normal to see somebody just walking around videotaping itself. I've always thought about other ways that I can do it where it's, it's a little more hidden so people aren't nervous when you're talking to them. But it's just something you have to get over. And you have to realize like what other people think about you doesn't really matter. As long as you're having a good time doing what you're doing and enjoying it, you know? Oh, I think. Yeah. So, um, how do you get past YouTube's demonetization issue that's been getting worse over the past couple of years? I've had an incredible past year with that. It's awful, man. I hate the changes that they made and it made it a lot more difficult for anybody to do anything. And that's another thing that everyone has to really be aware of if you're doing this for a living. At any point, it can get cut. If that's what you do and that's the only money you make, then you're screwed. You have to make sure that you have backups. You know, like I make t-shirts for my channel and I have other stuff going on. I do some freelance work every once in a while. You don't have that kind of stuff. And like you, what he was saying is, uh, YouTube had a huge issue in the past couple years where they switched the way their algorithm works. So uh, a lot of people were getting demonetized for videos that were completely family friendly. And even though you weren't doing anything wrong, you were getting penalized for stuff that other people did. What happens if you get banned? If you accidentally show something you're not supposed to or upload something you didn't know was bad, there goes your whole job. That's like losing your job like that, you know? And, and for me, I haven't gone to a nine to five in years. So for me to do that now would be very difficult. Everybody wants to know, where was the last place you worked? You know, how long, had, how long were you there? All that stuff. And if you say it's been years since you've worked for anybody, it's very hard to get a job. Definitely something everyone has to think of too. Have you ever gone too far? Yes. <laughs> when I used to do my hardcore mayhem stuff, uh, that was the whole point of it, was to go too far. Were you ever afraid of <clears throat> sharing information, like people are gonna steal things from you or? You know, giving away secrets. I mean, I feel like as artists, it's important to share our craft. What I've noticed a lot of creators do is they'll post tutorials or videos or whatever showing their work, and they usually just brush past that kind of stuff so that they don't give away all their secrets. And they mention it. Think about it, when it comes to doing YouTube, it's about you. It's about the person who is actually uploading the content. You don't have to show everything, but as long as you explain that to people, they won't get upset about it. You know, you could just be like, this is my little secret. You guys can figure out your own way or whatever. But when it comes to me explaining to people how this all works, I don't mind because I want more people to do it. Yeah. I had a really big issue because live streaming, there's not that many people who do it. Who am I going to ask for help? If I don't know what bit rate means and then I go and look it up and it all sounds like Chinese to me, it's just all trial and error. It'd be more accurate to say it's Japanese. What's Japanese? Uh, the, uh... You were saying like it's also like the tech terms. Like, wouldn't it more accurate say it's Indian or Japanese? Is it tomato or tomato? It's uploading, yeah. What's it for? It's for my channel. <laughs> see, look. So while I'm streaming, people are talking, and they can see. Uh, these are all comments from people as we're here talking to each other and they can see everything we're doing live. So it's almost like live news right now in your face. I still don't really understand how live streaming totally works is the thing. I kind of get it, but not quite like the details. Okay, what part of it don't you understand? Is there a program or some kind of app you need to use? 
streams. You don't have to, but there are apps that make it a lot easier. The app that I'm streaming on right now is called Streamlabs, and that's the one that most live streamers use when they're running out because not only can I stream what's going on here and uh, and see everybody's comments and everything coming up, but it also lets me add up uh, notifications. So if somebody wanted to donate to me right now to say something out loud, I have my speaker on. What would happen is the notification would actually get pop up and it would be read out loud by text-to-speech. So people can actually interact if they want to. Yeah, if I'm out like talking to specific people and somebody has a question they want to ask and I happen to not see it in the chat, they can donate and then that also supports my channel at the same time. What was the name of that? Stream Streamlabs. Yeah, and then they just came out with another app called Streamlabs OBS, which is their uh, broadcasting software. And that's what I use online, like if I'm doing uh, Twitch or YouTube gaming streams, it's always with a program called OBS. So you, what you can do with that, it's like a switcher. So you can actually pull in different clips and play them and switch your scenes. Like if you have multiple cameras, you can switch between cameras using that. And I can set it all up so that all these notifications pop up. If somebody were to subscribe right now, you'll see a thing come up that says, hey, so-and-so subscribed, and it makes a little sound. So I, it, it's kind of cool because then you can be interactive with everyone. You can thank people for subscribing or answer people's comments when they leave it as you're going. I do watch like some live streams and almost always they have some sort of like little personalized notification thing. Mm -hmm. Like there's this guy named Maximilian. He streams a lot of fighting games. Yeah. Whenever somebody um, ah, like joins or donates, like a little picture of his dog flashes up. Yep, and then it says how much they donated and their message and everything, right? Yeah, that's exactly the app that I'm using now to stream, but you don't have to. YouTube has their own app that you can download and use to stream, and uh, you can do it that way, but you can't capture like your computer screen with it. You, you would have to use something more like OBS. Um, this is going back to like the demonetization stuff. Like, how did the adpocalypse like affect you? Yeah, it hurt me very bad. And imagine, this is like your your boss getting mad at one of your coworkers for doing something but cutting your pay. And, and then you go, well, why did you cut my pay? And they just don't answer. That, that's how I can relate it to. It's awful. You, there's nothing you can say or do. You just deal with it. And so I just kept doing what I do, you know, and eventually it started coming back up. And I know, like, a lot of people now are, like, in a frenzy because of net neutrality, so... Yeah. Can you see upstairs? We can get footage yeah, show me upstairs. It was nice talking to you guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for yeah. having me. We're all going to follow you, and if you ever have questions for him, we can put you in touch. <laughs> all right, I'll see you guys later. Have a good rest of your days. All right, guys, I'm going to stop the stream here. Thanks for hanging out and watching. Uh, I don't know. I know the connection's like really poor up here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually grab my other camera and do the rest of my stream with the good camera.